At first glance, this story comes across as a story about the freedom of press, or journalists' rights. But this story is much more than that. It is about a much bigger threat to the Canadian public across all of Canada. It's about a blatant violation of civil rights. It's about victim-centered investigations and trauma-informed, zero-tolerance police policies in the name of protecting women from male-perpetrated criminal harassment and violence. First, let me tell you what happened to Antoine Trepignier, based on the media accounts and police statements that have been made publicly. Mr. Trepignier is a journalist who had spoken to a woman, Yvonne Dubay, on March 12th, to arrange a formal interview for a story he was working on. At first, Ms. Dubay agreed to Mr. Trepignier's request for interview. She then declined to do the interview at the last minute. Ms. Dubay was the subject of an investigation that Radio Canada had been working on. That story involves Ms. Dubay falsely portraying herself as a lawyer and practicing law without a license. She is the executive director of a chapter of a well-known charitable organization, Big Brothers Big Sisters. So Mr. Trepignier sent her an email the next day, March 13th, requesting to reschedule the interview. Later that evening, Mr. Trepignier was arrested by the Gatineau police for criminal harassment. So as you can see, this all took place within a 24-hour period, and there was no investigation. Yvonne Dubay simply called the police, expressed that she feared for her life, and the police set out to arrest the man that she accused of criminal harassment, with no questions asked. By now you might be wondering if he had said anything in his email that warranted this woman to fear for her life and call the police for protection. Well, the fact that the Quebec Crown decided not to press charges should answer that question for you. Mr. Trepignier was lucky that this was the outcome. In some other provinces, such as Ontario, the police will arrest you and charge you, then hand the case to the Crown for prosecution. In fact, they will even have the charges written up against you before you're even contacted or arrested. There is no investigation done to be sure that they're not arresting an innocent man. The police will either lure you to the station for arrest on the spot, or come find you and arrest you on the spot. Now, let's go back to the root of this problem. Why are the police arresting men immediately after a woman complains about them? Why aren't the police investigating the woman's complaint to be sure it's valid before putting a potentially innocent man under undue duress, shock, and trauma? Two words, feminist policy. Feminists have developed a theory that when a woman complains about a man harassing them on any level, the man must be stopped before he progresses to murdering her. Feminists have also developed a theory that if they train police officers on victim-centered investigations, the victim will be better served by the justice system. Over the years, the Victim Rights Act and violence against women policies have melded into a doctrine that treats all complaints from women as valid and to be believed without question. It is considered to be victim blaming or re-traumatizing to the complainer if the police actually investigated them before deciding to arrest the male. Now, are you starting to see how this is a very real public threat? This is not isolated to the province of Quebec. This is nationwide and I'll even go as far to say across all countries that share the structure of the British common law system. I'd like to conclude this by urging Radio Canada and Mr. Trepignier, or at least Mr. Trepignier, to pursue a private prosecution against Ms. Dubay for misleading the police, causing him undue harm, and to pursue suing the Gatineau police for causing Mr. Trepignier undue harm by failing to act with the duty of care that they are obliged to, according to a little-known Supreme Court of Canada decision, Hill v. Hamilton-Wentworth Police Services. That duty of care includes a thorough investigation, regardless of the type of complaint, who it's made by, or who it's about. In the case of Mr. Trepignier and the Gatineau Police, 
The police have already admitted that the arresting police officer clearly did not properly assess the situation. Clearly, the officer did not properly assess the situation based on the victim's statement. The decision by the Directeur des Poursuites Criminelles et Pénales confirms that not all the basic elements for an infraction were present. This statement of admission to misconduct opens the door wide for the opportunity to expose why police officers in Canada arrest males accused of crimes against women without proper investigation. And it opens the door to expose internal, non-public, zero-tolerance policies that tell the police to arrest immediately in such a case and then only listen to the victim when she claims she's fearful. This is also a golden opportunity for the Canadian public to be aware and understand that they are currently under a very real public threat. And maybe only now can we do something to protect the innocent accused, such as people like Mr. Trepanier.